tonight before the man of God stands before you to declare total freedom. I need to announce to you, thank God we're doing it this time, the presence of our mother in the Lord, the mother in Israel, the womb that carries deep alive worldwide, Mama Esther, come will you put your hands together and welcome. Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave, 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 wave your hand and give a rousing welcome. Welcome, Mommy. We are very grateful for taking us thus far. Praise the Lord. Uh, we, we also notice that uh, the Yoruba speakers don't even know where to stay. Now, we need to announce to you, if you don't understand English, the raised Yoruba interpretation. You go there at the back there and the middle there at the back of the uh, extension there. Please take them there for their own interpretation. And those who are standing up there, we have plenty chairs there you can occupy. There's no reason for anyone to stand up tonight because we have enough chairs. All those who are hanging under the trees, come and get on your seat. Now, we have to get ready. Get set. Be on your mark. Everywhere this crusade has been held, God has always proved himself. And the word of his servant never fell to the ground. Every prayer he has ever prayed has brought about spontaneous miracles. In Lagos, I need to say that quickly now, in Lagos, last month, a lot happened in Lagos. Because after the prayers, in one of the days, and other days that followed, about four dead people came back to life. One dead in Ethiopia came back to life. Remember, our daddy was preaching in Lagos. Our miracles were happening far away in Ethiopia. That's for you to understand that there is no distance and there's no barrier when he begins to pray. Tonight, you will find your miracle. There's no way anyone can go back home tonight without receiving the touch of the anointing. Not only that, in, a, in the Lagos, Abiyokuta side there, in Ogun State there, another woman that's above, above 80 years old died. I mean, died, certified dead. After prayer, while the message was going on, the dead came back to life. We could give on, keep on telling the stories of what God had done a lot. I can remember in 2007, about 15 years ago, this kind of crusade was held at the old airport in Ibadan here. A girl came with one leg shorter than the other. And had, she had to be walking on a kind of orthopedic pair of shoes. To balance her gait. But then, after preaching, you better wait, listen to all the message. Don't try to go out and wait also until the prayers are finished and testimonies are given. Before you go home, we have buses enough to take you back to your houses. And now, after prayer, this lady discovered. This is true. This is not make up story. She discovered the shorter leg had grown out and balanced up with the, with the other leg. And she came to the podium, walking up and down, no need for orthopedic shoes anymore. If you came here tonight and you were lame, or one leg shorter than the other, or you are blind, whatever it's a bondage in your life, it is broken by the anointing of the man of God. The louder your amen, the bigger your miracles. 
And now tonight, I have the greatest joys of my life to introduce my father in the Lord. The apostle to the nations, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumu, you put your hands together. Praise the Lord. If I know your state, I said, Praise the Lord. Freedom. Total freedom. For your spirit. For your soul. For your body. For your family. It's coming your way tonight. Father, we thank you for this hour, the hour of total freedom, salvation, healing, deliverance. Lord, I pray that tonight you open the windows of heaven, pour down miracles upon everyone in Jesus' name. No one will go back home empty handed. Tonight, Night of miracle, night of power, night of salvation, night of healing, night of deliverance, night of the anointing that breaks every yoke. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight is the beginning of the six-day crusade that we're having here at the bottom at the Alpha location. And it goes to all parts of the world. While the message is going on, the touch of the Lord will come to your life. While the prayer is going on, every miracle you desire, every healing you desire, every deliverance you want will be granted unto you in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm going to start with a story in the Bible. Understand that the Bible is the word of God, and God resides in the word. And the word that comes from God will not go back to him empty-handed. It will definitely accomplish that, that the Heavenly Father has ordained in your life. In my life. It will be done. The story is in Acts chapter 8. And it's from verse 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Reading from verse 5. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. In verse 6, it says, And the people with one accord, all united, all in agreement, the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. The miracles which he did, you will hear. You will see. You see it in your life. You see it in your family. This is the day that God will do that again, hearing and seeing the miracles in the plural, the miracles plenty, the miracles for everyone which he did. Verse 7 then tells us, For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many. Any bad spirit, unclean spirit, devilish spirit, tormenting anyone tonight, you'll come out. And those who were taken with pulses, they were paralyzed, and that were lame were healed. Tonight is the night of your healing. And they were told in verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. Great joy, joy because of salvation, joy because of healing. Joy because of deliverance. Joy because of the miracle coming from God unto you. And joy because every prayer we pray on these grounds 
will be answered. Look at uh, chapter 15, verse 3. It says, I'm being brought on their way by the church, the pastor of financing, and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they cause great joy to all the brethren. The Lord will bring joy in your life today. Joy in your heart today. And the joy of a breakthrough in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight I'm speaking to you on this subject of precedented miracles with great joy through faith. It comes through faith as we believe in the Lord. I will expect from the Lord as we know that the Lord who has not changed the same yesterday and today and forever. He'll be going around. He'll get to your place right there. And the Lord will touch you and transform you. And then through your connection of faith, there will be great joy because of unprecedented miracles in your life in Jesus' name unprecedented something that never happened before what your eyes had never seen what your ears have never heard what your heart has never felt the great miracle power and the great miracle performance of the almighty in your life unprecedented miracles unprecedented salvation unprecedented healing unprecedented deliverance unprecedented freedom with great joy through faith in the Lord. Three things we're looking at in this story. Number one, the message of Christ to the whole city. Philip came to the city of Samaria as I come to this city today, bringing the same message, exalting the same Christ, talking about the same uh, most high God and moved and inspired, energized, anointed by the same Holy Spirit, expecting that the same thing that was done in the city of Samaria will be done in our city here tonight. Yeah. Number two, the miracle of cure for wholehearted citizens. The people that come, and they say, with all my heart and with all my soul, I have come. And you don't leave anything behind. It's not just your body there. Your body is here. Your mind is here. Your soul is here. Your spirit is here. The totality of yourself, everything here, there will be a miracle of cure for the whole-hearted citizens. The citizens of that nation and the citizens of that city. As Philip came, he brought miracle. As Philip came, he brought power. As Philip came, he brought freedom to the people. I come to you today. Anywhere you are, you are here at the Alpha location. You are over there in your house, in an hotel room, or in a church building, anywhere you are, outside or inside, in any country, in any continent, power is coming your way tonight. <laughs> then, number three, the manifestation. Somebody shout, manifestation. The power of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, and impossibilities that will become possible, there will be manifestation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The manifestation of confession. What you confess with your mouth, I am healed, it will be manifested. I am saved, it will be manifested. I am free, it will be manifested. What you confess with your mouth, what you declare with your mouth, according to the promise of God, according to the power of God that cannot fail today. In this very place, there will be the manifestation according to your confession with wholesome conversion. 
wholesome conversion. Total conversion. Thorough conversion. A converted heart. A converted life. A converted soul. A converted spirit. A converted personality. The Lord by his power. And the Lord because of the finished work that he did on the cross of Calvary already. And that miracle of conversion, of total transformation is waiting for you. It will come tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the message. Number two is the miracle. And number three, the manifestation. You have all those three, you sink them in, manifestation will come in your life. Number one now is the message of Christ for the whole city. The message of Christ for the whole city. Let's come back to Acts chapter 8 and I'm looking at verse 5. If you don't have the Bible there, don't worry, I'll read it to you now. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. He, Philip, a child of God, not only that, a man of God, not only that, one that had the Spirit of God upon his life. You know, it's not the stature of Philip. It's not the knowledge of Philip. It is not any kind of, uh, you can talk about the qualities of Philip. It's the Spirit of God in him. And anywhere that Spirit goes with the man, Power will be manifested. And so, as I come to you tonight, I come. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the power of the Holy Ghost. I come to you in the anointing that breaks every yoke. And tonight, any problem in your life, every chain, every shackle, everything that ties you, everything will be broken in Jesus' name. But you know, he did something. He preached Christ unto them. And that's what we're doing now. He preached Christ unto them. As I come to you, I bring the message of Christ. That he is Savior. I bring the message of Christ. That he is the one that died for you. He died on the cross of Calvary for you. He knew you. Before you were born, he knew where you were born. And he knows you today. And he's saying, there is a message coming from heaven. And it is coming to you directly. The message is because Jesus bore your punishment. Jesus bore the consequence of your crime. Jesus bore the condemnation you should have had. It says, because of that, all you have to do now is come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As you come tonight to Christ, as you believe in Christ tonight, as you look at Calvary, where Christ died for you, and it became the final, the total sacrifice for your sin, and you say, Lord, I come and I believe all your sins will be forgiven. Amen. Not only that, you know, there is forgiveness, there is freedom. Let me explain to you. If somebody has forgiveness and he doesn't have freedom, the nature of sin will still pull him down. He will still keep on committing sin. And they'll be coming and coming and coming. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But Christ did not only come to give you forgiveness. He came to give you freedom. To set you free. And the power of sin will be broken in your life. And you'll be saying, I couldn't help it. I did that. I couldn't help it. I went that way. I couldn't help it. 
I told that lie. I couldn't help it. I became a drunkard. I couldn't help it. I became a smoker. I couldn't help it. I was into fornication. I couldn't help it. Adultery was the problem. I couldn't help it. Stealing was the problem. I couldn't help it. And if you come to God and say, forgive me, that is one part. The second part that sets you free. And it says, neither do I condemn you. I forgive you. But now, beyond the forgiveness, go and sin no more. The power to live in freedom. Freedom from all the chains of sin that bound you before. That power the Lord will give unto you. You will say, I was a bad character, a bad person a bad personality but he has forgiven me that means the judgment the punishment of what i was before he has taken that away there is no condemnation now to them that walk in the spirit and not in the flesh and now he gives you freedom and he says you shall know the truth the truth that christ is savior the truth that Christ is the one that changes us and converts us. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It changes your personality. It changes your person. It changes what you have been before. And it said, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. He preached Christ unto them. Christ as their savior. Christ as the one that forgives them. Christ as the one that sets them free. Look at verse 6 there. It says in verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Understand? All those people, some of them were religious. They had their religious ideas in the past before Philip came. They had their religious traditions before Philip came. They had their religious dogma before uh, Philip came. But the moment they listened, they said light and darkness will not go together. They said oil and water will not mix. And because of that, all the old ideas all the old tradition, all the old dogma, they pushed all that aside. And what Philip now spoke concerning Jesus Christ, they accepted the two. And because they accepted that truth that Philip now brought, seeing and hearing the miracles which he did, salvation came to them like tonight salvation has come to you new life has come to you and the power to live in newness of life has come to you tonight in jesus name look at verse 35 in verse 35 then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture philip did not tell stories of tradition and stories of mr so-and-so madam so-and-so he took the scriptures he explained the scriptures he applied the scriptures to them and he made them to know that everything that christ did on the cross of calvary he did it for them he did it for each of them and because of that they personalized the word that Philip spoke unto them. Not just that Christ is the savior of the world. Christ is my savior. Not just that Christ died for the world. Christ died for me. Not just that Christ will forgive. Every sin, everyone over there has committed. But Christ will forgive every sin I had committed and the moment you take that personally tonight 
He died on the cross. He cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You personalize that. It was for you he died. It was for you he shed his blood. It was for you he provided salvation. When you accept that personally, something good is going to happen to you. Look at Acts chapter 17. And I'm reading here from Bastachi. Acts chapter 17. Reading from Bastachi. And the times of this ignorance, God winged at. Everyone has been ignorant. Ignorant of the sins they were committing. They called good evil. They called evil good. They called the message of heaven an ordinary message. But now, all those times of ignorance that they acted and they spoke and they did things they shouldn't have done, God said, if you come today, if you repent today, if you turn around today, I will forgive and forget the past. I will also set you free. And so all this time of ignorance, God win that. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. See what God has now commanded. He says, but now. He's talking to you. He said, all that time of ignorance, sinning, doing evil, committing sin, and not thinking of the consequence. Earthly consequence. Eternal consequence of the sins you were committing. He says, now. He commanded all men, everyone, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, every person on earth, it comes to you. And he says, as you are here, the same message that was preached to that city and to every citizen in that city, that message is coming to you now. They accepted, you will accept. I said they accepted, you will accept. They repented, you will repent. They turned from their evil ways. They said total, complete, absolute bye-bye to all the sins of the past. And as you come today, like they came up, and you say bye-bye, total bye-bye, final bye-bye, complete bye-bye to all the sins of the past. And you repent as he has commanded all men everywhere to repent. Favor will come to you. Mercy will come to you. And the joy of salvation will come to you in Jesus' name. The Lord says a day of judgment is coming. And the only people that will escape the judgment, fiery judgment, tormenting judgment, unbearable judgment, that will escape the judgment of God are the people that listen to God as he has commanded all men everywhere to repent. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because, it says, repent now. Because, it says, turn around now. Because, abandon your sin, abandon your evil, abandon your idolatry. Because abiding, uh, abandon the violence in your hand. Because abandon your hypocrisy. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world 
He will judge every man, every woman. He will judge every boy, every girl. He will judge every secret of man, every idle word, every idle action every idle behavior he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead and as the lord is calling you today and he's saying judgment day is coming but today is the day of salvation the day of repentance and the day of freedom as you take the freedom tonight judgment will pass you by i said as you take jesus tonight your savior your lord your redeemer the one who died for you and the one that said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you accept that tonight, believe that tonight, embrace that tonight, and look the direction of Christ by faith, saying, He is my Savior. Your salvation tonight will be registered in heaven. Where are you? I said, where are you? Your salvation tonight? My salvation tonight? I can't hear you. My salvation tonight will be registered in heaven. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He'll give you rest. Luke chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 32. Luke Chapter 5, verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's the word of Christ. There are some people that have not come to Christ. They will not come to Christ. They say I'm good. They say I'm righteous. They say I'm pure. They say I'm a church goer. They say I've been baptized in water as an infant. They say, I take Holy Communion. They say, I am, I am, I am. They have all things. They don't have Christ. It says, all those people who are sure of themselves and will not come, I came not to call the self-righteous, but I came to call sinners to repentance. As you accept the message that the Lord is giving you tonight, and you say, yes, Lord, I know I am the guilty one. I know I am the sinner. And I come pleading that the Lord will forgive me, and the Lord will set me free, and the Lord will grant me total salvation. He will answer your prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Let's come back now to Acts chapter 8 from verse 6 acts chapter 8 from verse 6 the miracle the miracle of kill for wholehearted citizens the miracle of kill thank god the power to heal is still here today the power to heal you the power to deliver you and the power to break every yoke in your life Tonight, that power is here. And that power will be sent over there to you. Every ache, every pain, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every affliction, every attack, every yoke, everything is broken tonight in Jesus' name. And look at Acts chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 6. It says, And the people with one accord give heed to those things with Philip spake, hearing and seeing. They heard of the power of Christ, that Christ is able, able to forgive, 
able to destroy that sin that wants to terminate your life able to take that incurable disease away from your life they heard that hearing 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 they paid attention and everything they heard christ healed the sick christ delivered the afflicted and christ broke every yoke they applied to themselves if christ did that for them at that time he will do it for me he will do it for me and every testimony you have heard as this global crusade has been going on was seen the blind healed was seen the deaf and dumb receiving their hearing and receiving the ability to speak was seen the lame walking was seen short leg growing out was seen broken bones mended and joined together was seen kidney problems totally solved and was seen even the dead rising they heard they accepted they embraced and they said what god has done for other people it will do for me and they got it and as we say the same thing and you say what the lord has done for all the people it will do for me it will do for you yeah. i said it will do for you yeah. when will the lord do that for you the moment you accept because god is no respecter of persons he loves you as much as he loved them all those people he healed all those people he delivered he manifested mercy unto them love unto them and he broke every yoke in their lives and he loves you as much as he loved them and they had that and they embraced that and they accepted that hearing and seeing have you noticed those two words? Those who heard also saw. Those who kept on hearing, they also kept on seeing. What you see, and you transfer to your life. You see, they got saved. You transfer that to your life. I hear, I see. They got healed. You transfer that to your life. I hear, I see. The God delivered, you transfer that your life. I hear, I see. Every good thing you have heard in the message of the power of Christ to break every yoke, to destroy the works of the devil, every good thing you have heard will be transferred into your life. I hear, I see. I've heard, I will see. I've known about it, I will see. Power will come to you. Healing will come to you. Deliverance will come to you. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Those miracles were done. And in your life tonight, miracles will take place. Healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Look at that at verse 7. In verse 7, he tells all the kinds of miracles that actually happened then, and the kinds of miracles that will happen now at this time for unclean spirits, unclean spirits, crying with loud voice came out of many the evil spirits and evil power that cause disease in your life that spirit at a command at the name of jesus will come out tonight and that were possessed with them and many taken with pulses weakness of the bone 
weakness in their joints, pain in their joints, pain all over the body, inability to stand up, inability to walk, inability to do what they ought to do. And everything in their bodies, paralyzed, impotent, not working, power will surge into you tonight in Jesus' name. Pain in the head will go. Liver problem will be solved. Cancer will vanish away. Arthritis will vanish away. Tuberculosis will be driven away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. The moment you hear the name of Jesus, that manifestation will come. All that were taken with pulses and that were lame. That were lame. That were lame. They were healed. Why is that going to happen tonight? It will happen in your life. Happen in your body. The spinal cord that have been damaged, new life will come to that spinal cord. And everything you've been carrying about, or they have to carry you like a baby and put you down gently. Tonight, as I proclaim the name of Jesus upon you, power will come upon your body in Jesus' name. You will rise up and you will walk. Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 16. Acts, chapter 5, verse 16. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, carrying sick folks, pushing sick folks, Lifting them up because those people were helpless, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed, everyone. And they were healed, everyone. And they were healed, everyone. Say, me too. Say it aloud, me too, everyone. It will come to your turn. And tonight is that night. The night of power. The night of healing. The night of deliverance. That everyone, from the left to the right to the center to the back, anywhere you are, they were healed, everyone. How? Because of the name of Jesus. And that name is still as powerful today as it ever was. They were healed, everyone. Whatever internal problem, external problem, eyes problem, ears problem, liver problem, kidney problem. They were healed, everyone. And whatever your problem or challenge may be tonight. We will be healed, everyone, in Jesus' name. They were healed. The condition they brought in to the place, that condition changed. Tonight, your condition will change. Condition of paralysis will change. Condition. Acts chapter 14 verse 7 and there they preached the gospel and there they preached the gospel they preached the good news good news for the sinner 
forgiveness and freedom are available. Good news for the sick, healing is available. Good news for the oppressed, deliverance is available. Good news for the needy, provision is available. Good news, the gospel, there they preach the gospel. Good news has come to you, and that good news will be powerfully effected in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And look at this, look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, And there such a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his speech, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never, who never, who never had walked. There was one of the people there hearing the word of God like you are there tonight. And the Lord is going to touch your life. What are you? I said the Lord is going to touch your life. And then he says, this man had never walked. He was born a cripple. A cripple from his mother's womb. Never had walked. What you were never able to do before. Tonight, miracle will come to you. You will rise up and do that incredible, impossible thing. Even tonight, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, the same heard. That man, the same heard. He didn't say, I'm a cripple. What the use of hearing the word of God, the same impotent man heard. You won't say, I'm blind. What the use of hearing, what you hear will open your blind eyes. And the same man had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Paul looked at him. He didn't shake him. He didn't touch him. He didn't push him down. He didn't put oil on his forehead. He didn't pour holy water on him. He looked at him. And he saw. He could see from his attention. He could see from the way he was looking at Paul. This man had faith to be healed. The way I see you there tonight, I know you have faith to be healed. The way I see you there tonight, you're saying immediately they finish and then they make the altar call. I have faith tonight. It will forgive my sin. I have faith to be saved. Manifestation will come in your life. Manifestation. Manifestation. Performance. Miracle will come in your life in Jesus' name. He had faith to be healed. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and he lead and walk. And he lead and walk. Everybody could see that. They heard, they saw. The same thing tonight. Everything you are hearing, all the testimony I'm sharing with you, all the testimonies you have heard, you have heard, now it's your turn to see. And it's your time to see. As we tell the miracles and the testimonies of other places, then we'll carry your testimonies to other places. What you have heard, you have seen, they also will hear and they will see. Your eyes up. You will see. You will experience power will change and shake everything shakeable out of your life in Jesus' name. Number one is the message. Number two is the miracle. Number three is the manifestation. Somebody shout manifestation. The manifestation of confession with wholesome conversion. Wholesome conversion. If we come back to chapter 8 of Acts, verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Everywhere they came from, they came from different parts of the city. 
And a lame man came from that area, a blind man came from that area, an incredible man came from that area, and a bleeding a woman came from that area. They came from different places with different challenges, and all the various parts of the city they came from. Uh, there was great joy. And this one from this area is saying, my blind eyes were open. He said, you say that, me too. I was lame, now I can walk. Another one said, they rejected me, the hospital. Now I am healed. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you have come from, you are going to take great joy back home. Yeah. Healing back home. Yeah. Salvation back home. Yeah. Total freedom back home. Yeah. All the chains snapped and all the chains broke in you are going to go back home with songs of joy and songs of miracle in Jesus name power will come in your life when it says confession the manifestation of confession what does that mean I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he that covereth a sin shall not prosper the one that covers a sin that one is a pretender that one is a hypocrite that one is saying i am good but his conscience knows that is bad the one that says i am righteous and everybody in the city knows is unrighteous the one that says i'm honest everybody knows is a liar is a thief they are the people that cover their sins and they accuse god of not seeing and because of that they go empty and they, but look at this whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy 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 unto you unto him unto her unto them the way to have the mercy of salvation and the mercy compassion in healing and the mercy of a miracle whatever the challenge may be is to come and say lord i'm a sinner i want salvation salvation will come immediately i am sick i want healing uh, healing will come immediately i am oppressed i want deliverance deliverance will come immediately it will come I said it will come. Where is it coming? Salvation. Where? Salvation. Where? Where would it come? It will come to you there. I rejoice with you. As you confess with your mouth that you are a sinner, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior, you'll be saved you'll be healed yeah. you'll be delivered yeah. and everyone 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 will go back home with songs and testimony of joy in your heart in your mouth in your life in jesus name yeah. heaven is ready are you ready yeah. jesus is ready for you to save are you ready yeah. i said are you ready and the Lord is ready to break every yoke in your life and to heal every yoke in your life and to heal every sickness in your body. Are you ready? Ex bowed and eyes closed. Ex bowed and eyes closed. What a day! A day of joy for you. A day of salvation for you. A day of total freedom for you. He wants to forgive you. And he wants to set you free. He wants to write your name among those who are saved. He wants to write your name in the book of life. And you have heard the message. You have heard about the miracle. You have heard about the manifestation. It's happened to other people. It's now to happen unto you amen amen as but a nice close that salvation is near right now 
the savior is near right now you want that salvation you want forgiveness you want freedom you want him to let you loose so that all the chains of sin that bound you in the past everything will be cancelled now wherever you are and you're willing to confess i'm a sinner i want the savior and i want him to forgive me i want him to set me free wherever you are just raise up your hand amen just raise up your hand wonderful god bless you raise up your hand anywhere you are you don't have the assurance of total freedom you're still sinning still doing evil still drinking still smoking still lying still misbehaving and doing things contrary to the word of god and your conscience is telling you you are the guilty man you're the guilty woman but the lord wants to set you free and forgive you wherever you are raise up that hand thank you god bless you the lord is watching for you and the lord is saying if you will confess right now and turn away from those evil things you've done he says he will forgive you how could you miss that if you're raising up your hand please stand up wherever you are stand up wherever you are you cannot save yourself church cannot save you religion cannot save you um, a good samaritan that cannot save you christ is the only savior and christ jesus has the power to forgive he has the power to forgive he wants to forgive you now and he wants to set you free and take the body and the pressure and the power of sin out of your life he that covereth a sin shall not prosper but who so confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy as we are standing up tell the lord there lord i thank you you love me it's not your will that i shall perish you have commanded all men everywhere to repent and you have commanded me in particular to repent lord i come to you lord i surrender unto you lord i will not go back to all the vomit the sin of the past anymore lord i come i believe that christ the only begotten son of god died for me on the cross of calvary thank you lord i accept the forgiveness i accept your mercy i accept your salvation i accept eternal life i accept the new life in christ and i confess i am saved i confess i am saved i confess i am saved the lord has answered your prayer keep on standing i pray with you now father in the name of jesus i thank you because you are the one that called the sinner out of sin and you called everyone to repent they have turned away from their sin and they have come in genuine repentance believing that jesus died for them on the cross of calvary and rose again for their justification and salvation lord manifest that joy of salvation in their hearts right now wash away all their sins give them assurance you have answered their prayers they are no more children of satan they are now children of god confirm me to lord and let everyone go back home with great joy
the joy of salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. A counselors are nearby there. They'll give you slips to fill. Want to have record that this day you gave your life to Christ. You are forgiven. You are set free. We're we'll calling our state pastor to help us now with uh, the counseling period. Keep on standing. I'm coming back to pray for those who have any sickness, any disease in their body tonight. 